is Sharon Mashihi's pre-recorded voice. Me, 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 me. Ta. And I would like to introduce you again to Sharon Mashihi, the flesh and blood person. Hi. I'm Sharon, and this is a work in progress presentation in parts. Part one, the part of Sharon, flesh and blood, that's meeting you, best embodied by her right hand, the hand she uses for shaking yours. It was four and a half months ago in late January that I was offered a 20 Summers Fellowship, the fellowship that has me standing in front of you right now. I was asked to offer this presentation to you as a condition of receiving my $2,500 stipend and a place to stay in Provincetown for a week. I was told the presentation would take place on a Saturday at six o'clock in a barn, this barn, where Jackson Pollock once painted. And finally, I was told that there would be, quote, a media savvy crowd in attendance. <laughs> Immediately, I was overcome by one thought. A media savvy crowd? What if coming to see me speak turns out to be a waste of these media savvy people's time? What if I am forever remembered as the person who ruined the first Sunday in June for this media savvy crowd? But then I thought, what if the media savvy crowd loves my presentation? What if it's incredible? What if it's a wonderful evening for this media savvy crowd in a once graced by Jackson Pollock barn in Provincetown? But it's a bust of an evening for one nearly not online enough, lonely, aging woman named me. What if the performance is perfectly pleasing to others, but it means nothing to me? I sat with this for a second. I felt sorry for myself. I mean, I, I really felt sorry for myself. And then I remembered that I am a student of Zen Buddhism. And that thing that I did just there, turning you all into one group and seeing myself as separate from you, that goes against the way I want to see the world. And the idea that it is even possible to waste an evening is not really the way I want to engage with time. What I want is for all of us to be here together in this room as one body, one body where all value judgments about time and what is happening right now are in one sense perfectly legitimate and in another sense just noise. Bravo. Bravo. What are you, what are you doing? I'm applauding you. Nice move, Sharon. It's really a great technique. Convince the audience that if they don't like your work, it's not because your work is lacking in any way, it's just because their minds are creating noise. I mean, imagine the movie director who gets a bad review in some magazine and then writes a letter to the editor. Dear sir or madam, I read your review of my most recent work. I must inform you that you are a victim of your own noisy, preferential mind. My work transcends such pigeonholing. Sincerely, the director of yet another mid-2000s rom-com starring Owen Wilson. <laughs> my pre-recorded voice and I, we have an interfaith relationship. I'm pseudo-Buddhist and she's not that nice. It's true. I'm not that nice. 
I think it's the whole voice of God thing. It seems to give me a little power trip. Anyway, end of part one. Part two, Sharon's throat. So I want to go back to the media savvy thing because I think that they told me you were media savvy because it's important for me to know who it is I am speaking to. My guiding question whenever I make anything, big or small, is how is this a gift to the audience? And it can be helpful when giving a gift to know who the gift is for. And I think by telling me that you were media savvy, they were trying to tell me that you're smart and that you are an audience that has practice at being an audience. In other words, this ain't your first audience rodeo. <laughs> that is who I'm speaking to today, an experienced crowd. And who am I? Who is it that you are hearing from? Well, who am I is related to two other questions which I find very anxiety provoking. These two questions are questions that I am asked, that all of us are asked on an almost daily basis. The questions, how are you, and what do you do? <laughs> I mean for work. What do you do for work? The answer to both of these questions always for me is, I can't really explain it. I can't really explain how I'm doing, and I can't really explain what I do for work. Not quickly anyway, not as quickly as you'd probably like. And whenever I try to begin to explain who I am or what I do for work at a speed that is appropriate to normal human interaction, I start to feel a constriction in my throat. <coughs> a tightening that is so extreme. <coughs> it's as if all the blood in my body is rushing to that exact spot, the spot where my voice is kept. All this to say I can't really tell you who I am without you know, spontaneously giving myself laryngitis. I mean, I can't tell you who I am, am, but my pre-recorded voice can tell you who I am in a perfunctory way. Sharon Mashihi is a 38-year-old artist who works primarily in the medium of audio storytelling. She is single, has no children, and lives alone. In her spare time, she tries to work up the energy to go on bike rides and instead plays word games on her phone for hours and hours until her hands go numb. <laughs> Lest Sharon think I am a complete bitch only telling you negative things about her, I will also tell you that she is a decent dancer and a good friend. On the rare occasion that Sharon does manage to leave her house and go on a bike ride, she likes to recite various verses to herself, verses that she has memorized. Among these, one of her favorites is the very beginning of Dante's Inferno. Midway on our life's journey, I found myself in a dark wood, the right road lost. To tell about those woods is hard, so tangled, and rough and savage, that thinking of it now, I feel the old fear stirring. The other verse she likes to repeat to herself is a gatha, a Zen verse that is traditionally recited every night at the end of the day's meditation practice. Let me respectfully remind you, life and death are of supreme importance. Time swiftly passes by and opportunities are lost. On this night, the days of our lives are decreased by one. Awaken, awaken, take Heed! Do not squander your life. I'm not joking. 
She actually recites these intense verses to herself whenever she minds her bike. Just over and over again, reminding herself with the Dante of her very recent midlife crisis and reminding herself with the Zen Gotha as she winds in and out of traffic that she is going to die. Well, we're all going to die. That's just a fact. But remembering that we're going to die, reminding ourselves that this life is temporary, keeping this in mind, it can be very difficult, actually. Because if we kept it top of mind all the time, going to the grocery store, I'm going to die. Sending an email, I'm going to die. Taking a shower, I'm going to die. Sitting in a beautiful barn on a folding chair, watching a presentation on the first Sunday in June, I'm going to die. If we lived our lives that way, well, then we would really have to be alive. And that would be scary. 